Welcome to the Elden Conspiracy. The Banished Knights are a topic I've only given a cursory look in past videos, but I thought this was time to make a full-length examination on the subject. While other lore hunters may find excitement in the mysteries of Mikola or in the alchemical illusions in many item descriptions, I find the origins and history of the Banished Knights far more interesting, not only because this subject is one so rarely tackled. When I talk about the Banished Knight civilization, I'm talking about three different enemy types encountered in the game. There are the Banished Knights, then there are the Exiles and the Commander Bosses. Because they all tend to show up in the same place, have similar armor designs, and all use the storm techniques of Storm Hill, it's easy to say they all come from the same culture or civilization. Let's start by reading some item descriptions. Nearly all the Banished Knight gear says that they were forced to abandon their homes. No mention is ever made of where these homes originally were. The second paragraph often mentions the accomplishments of these knights, such that they are able to keep the title of knight despite their territorial losses. The Exiles gear tells a similar story. They were soldiers who were sent to the penal colonies. But the Exiles aren't simply criminals. Their use of storm techniques and the pockmarks on their gear make them a unique group with their own history. As for the line about penal colonies, the only places in the game which could suffice for penal colonies would be the mines, but we don't find exiles there, so perhaps Stormvale was once considered a penal colony. The old descriptions of the Banished Knight's armor describes Stormvale as a place of exile. Whether or not this was meant as canon in the final product, Stormvale itself seems ruined and burned, not the sort of place to be the thriving capital of a nation. The Exiles also appear to be the only ones affected by the Stormvale curse propagated by the visage of Godwin in the basement. While the Banished Knights and their gear are totally unaffected, the lack of curse symptoms could also indicate that the Banished Knights are a later arrival to Stormvale. It could be because Godwin bears a grudge against the Exiles specifically for some unknown reason, for which he is cursing them beyond the grave. The Exiles are especially difficult to study since all the weapons they use are generic the basic longsword, spear, and heavy crossbow. The Crescent Great Axe, however, is a unique weapon wielded only by exile soldiers. The description says the name Crescent is inspired by nostalgia. Given all the moon imagery in this game, this could mean several things. In the mountaintops of the giants, the moon is always visible and is a crescent. Does this mean the exiles come from the north? Or it could just be a throwaway reference to other Souls games. It is strange that no matter where in Elden Ring we find exiles' weapons, they always bear the marks of Godwin's curse. It's even stranger given that FromSoft made models of these weapons which do not have such marks. Since there have been updates for more than a year and the Exiles weapons have remained unchanged, I think this is meant to be intentional. Both the Knights and Exiles gear paints the picture of a civilization which was forced to surrender and capitulate to an invading power. The question we may ask is, what invading power? This may be hard to figure out since the shattering has been going on for an untold amount of time when we get to the lands between. But I think it's quite simple to see from their allegiance to Godric and Stormvale that it was Merica's regime and specifically the Golden Line under Godfrey which subdued the Banished Knights and later accepted the services of those who proved their loyalty. Many item descriptions involving Godfrey often talk about the time before the Erd Tree as being a time of great conflict. I believe the Banished Knights and Exiles are descendants of these societies, which Godfrey and his warriors conquered. Many people online will automatically assume the Banished Knights are Godfrey's warriors. This would be redundant considering the Tarnished are already Godfrey's kin, and the Crucible Knights are Godfrey's own knights. The Banished Knights are Godfrey's in the sense they were forced to surrender the control of their territory, and now serve in the military of his descendants. If the Banished Knights were originally soldiers of Godfrey or Tarnished, the descriptions involving lost territory would make absolutely no sense, since Limgrave would be their territory. The only reasonable conclusion is that they are knights and soldiers of the cultures who lived in Limgrave and elsewhere before the expansion of America's regime. From a distance, the equipment of the Banished Knights may appear generic. Upon closer inspection, we find a veritable menagerie of heraldic emblems. The majority of knights have the bare metal breastplate, which is in keeping with their role as mercenaries. Some have a surcoat with the same symbol as the shield. These tend to be high-ranking knights, such as Edgar, the steward of Castle Morn. So what sort of emblems did the banished knights have before they were banished? I have found several banners which point to various allegiances within banished knight society. The first one is this dragon banner we find in the Round Table Hold and Stormvale Castle 
While it merely being in these locations is not definitive, we can also find this banner in the French folk hero's grave, a tomb dedicated to a banished knight, so we can be sure this banner was flown by a faction of the banished knights. The second is this banner which shows up in Stormvale, in the area before the Rampart Tower, depicting a highly stylized heraldic beast I'm calling the Wolfbird. This animal shows up on the Banished Knight's shield, and is also the same banner draped around the unaltered Banished Knight's helm, and crucially the one worn by knights in Faram Azala. Let's put a pin in this to talk about later. The third banner some viewers will already be familiar with is the Stormhawk banner of the Stormhawk clan. You can find this banner in the Altus Plateau, right outside the camps where suits of Banished Knight armor are embedded in the ground. The remains of a great battle which occurred during the Shattering. The Stormhawk clan I talked about in a previous video were one of the Banished Knights factions. What this shows, ostensibly, is that the Stormhawk Knights took part in the march on Landell during the Shattering. Even though the story trailer shows soldiers with the Beast and Tree Tabard of Godric, it's possible the remnants of the Stormhawk clan were employed by Godric when he marched on Landell. Then we have the issue of Godifroy and his capture by the Dragon Knight, and his role in all of this. I'm just going to take the evidence that we see in the game as canon and just talk about the Banished Knights. It's worth noting that the armor embedded in the ground does not show dragons on the helm, nor do we see the usual Banished Knight weapons and shields, but Exiles gear. This could mean the remnants of the Stormhawk clan became the Exiles we know today, but this is a shaky conclusion. There is one other heraldic emblem to talk about with regards to the Banished Knights. The breastplate shows a creature one of my fellow Discord users called a Capricorn. This is an animal that shows up in several reliefs in Stormvale, Chapel of Anticipation, and the arenas. In these reliefs, the Capricorn is often paired with the lion. Today, we know the lion as the emblem of Godfrey. This could represent some kind of alliance between Godfrey and the Banished Knights. But the lion has other meanings, which we will return to later. Notice that I don't use the term Empire to describe the Banished Knights' civilization. This is because I think the Banished Knights come from several kingdoms, who were not allies, and frequently opposed one another in the time before America's regime. But nonetheless, they had the same general architectural style. Where we find evidence of Banished Knight inhabitancy supports this conclusion. On nearly every continent of the lands between, we find forts and castles with Banished Knight or Exiles weapons, propped up on tables or walls. While this could be from software recycling assets, we also see very consistent architectural style across all these forts, the use of the saint and libation statues as well. The Banished Knight civilization at its height spanned the entire lands between. This is what makes it so difficult when we ask where the Banished Knights were banished from, because everywhere on the lands between is potentially their home. Well, the question becomes simpler once we realize the Banished Knights are not all from the same kingdom, or had allegiance to the same monarch before they were conquered by Horolu. The multiple heraldic emblems we see associated with them confirms this. We can say for sure the Stormhawk clan was based in Stormvale Castle. We know this from the description of the Hawkcrest wooden shield. We also see, exclusive to Stormvale, the banner of the Wolfbird. The Wolfbird could be a later evolution of the Stormhawk sigil. We can imagine the Stormhawk crest may have changed over time, perhaps from the inclusion of other bloodlines through marriage. But remember that the Stormhawk clan itself is a theory born out of disparate pieces of evidence. The other Banished Knight factions are far more difficult to study because there is no explicit description of any discrete groups. We can say the Banished Knights once ruled the area around Landell and the Altus region, Redmain Castle, Castle Soul, Flame Guardian's Garrison, and the Volcano Manor. However, who exactly these factions were, and what kind of gods they worshipped, or what kind of monarchs they followed, is completely unknown. We do know there is some relation to the Divine Towers and Astrology, Two Divine Towers, the one in Limgrave and the other in Landell, are both connected to castles which we know were inhabited by the Banished Knights Society. What this tells us is that the Banished Knights in these regions were allies with the ones who built or at least maintained the towers, and perhaps took part in the building of the bridges to and from these towers. Whether this was the time when the stars guided fate, as told by the telescope description, is unknown. Today, we can see two distinct factions of Banished Knights. First, there are the Dragon Helm Knights who patrol Stormvale. These knights use exclusively the storm techniques of the region. They also show up at Castle Soul in spirit form, using the frost variants of the usual storm skills. The second faction wear the unaltered Banished Knight Helm with the Stormvale Scarf, and use dragon incantations in addition to storm skills. 
These knights show up a bit near the Cathedral of Dragon, but we see them in force in Faram Azala. Judging from the scarf, we can say these knights came from Stormvale, and wear the flag as a reminder of their homeland. We also find that wearing the unaltered Banished Knight helm with any of the Banished Knight chest pieces takes away the horn on the shoulder. When talking about where the scarf-wearing knights were banished from, we could say they were banished from Stormvale. The Dragon Helm knights, on the other hand, were banished to Stormvale from another region, possibly the Altus region or Volcano Manor, since we can see the Dragon Banner in these places as well. We only see two scarf-wearing banished knights in Stormvale, but in very interesting circumstances. Past the area where we find the Godskin Prayer Book and Seal, we can find a fog door, which requires a stone sword key. Past this door and up the ladder, we come upon two banished knights, one with a scarf and one without, squaring off with several exile corpses between them. If they were the ones who killed these exiles, then why? If we get close enough, both knights aggro to the player. This dismisses any theory I might have had that the two banished knight factions were somehow opposed. If anyone knows how to data mine can find out if there is any AI script buried in the game for these two knights to be hostile toward each other, please let me know. The second scarf knight we encounter in Stormvale is above the area leading to Godric boss fight. We can reach it with some moderate platforming. This knight has a bird for a companion, but is himself looking over the corpse of a dead Stormvale warhawk. It is important to note the difference in color between the dead, nearly purple hawk, with the covering over its head designed for igniting flames, and the gray hawk companion of the knight without any such covering. Yet it still has the blades attached to its legs. Did this banished knight kill this hawk? Or perhaps it is examining the corpse to find out who killed it. If the knight did kill this hawk, this could fit my theory of a conflict between the two banished knight factions we see throughout the game. Commanders O'Neill and Nial deserve special mentions. They are also members of the Banished Knight and Exile Society. We can tell this by the stylings of their armor and the use of storm abilities, and also by the fact they literally summon spirits of exiles and banished knights in combat. The descriptions of their gear paints them as mercenary commanders. O'Neill fought on the side of Millennia in her war against Radon. His storm attacks seem to have absorbed the essence of the Scarlet Rot and now deal Scarlet Rot buildup. His exposure to the Rot could explain his limp and his difficulty at getting around. We find Nial in a very different arena. From his equipment, we hear he commanded spirits to defend his long-past master. The long-past master he was defending is most likely the spirit holding the second half of the Halig Tree Medallion. This all explains why he is there. But the armor also says that he could not die, nor did he have anywhere to fade away. I have to believe that, in the world of Elden Ring, people are not just immortal for no reason. This immortality could be related to the magic of Castle Soul and the influence of the Eclipse. Or it could have something to do with his weapon, the veteran's prosthesis. This is Nial's prosthetic, which is enchanted with lightning. As we know from other sources, lightning is not an element just anyone can have access to. The dragon cult of Dell learned lightning magic from Lansex, the ancient dragon. Did Nial have a similar relationship to the dragons at some point? Notice how it is the weapon itself which generates lightning, whereas the beastmen and knights who use lightning elsewhere use it in the form of weapon skills or spells. A similar weapon enchanted with lightning this way is the Stormhawk Axe, which we know is an heirloom of the ancient Stormhawk clan. Now we go into a more speculative angle. I said earlier that we would return to the subject of the Lion Emblem. The game tells us that the Lion is the emblem of Godfrey and his descendants. Yet I think there are some pieces of evidence to refute this. We don't find only one lion emblem in Elden Ring. The wooden great shield shows a pair of lions. This lion pair also shows up at the Chapel of Anticipation and on the graves in that location. Lions also show up in the lands between in various areas, usually courtyards of forts and castles built in the Banished Knight style. If these lions are native to the lands between, it is quite possible the lion emblem has an older, different meaning. Remember, Horalu is a warrior of the Badlands. He only put the lion Sirash on his back when he took on the name Godfrey. We are told through item descriptions of the lion emblem's meaning, to not let the lust for battle take over, is a very odd way to characterize a lion. As we know, restraint is not a quality lions are known for. This odd contradictory meaning given to the lion could point to some transition of power in which Godfrey appropriated the emblem from another group. This meaning that Godfrey and his men have given to the lion emblem could be the result of some horrific event, 
involving a faction who previously used the emblem, most likely one of the banished Night Kingdoms. Without any definitive statement, nearly all we have to go on when talking about the banished knights is conjecture. The use of storm techniques, the enduring signs of Godwin's curse, the banished knights factional disputes, Commander Nial's immortality and use of lightning, the role played in constructing the divine towers and the practice of astrology, and finally the legacy of the long-lost Stormhawk clan. All these things indicate a long and detailed history, of which we are only getting the slightest fraction. If nothing else, I hope this video has made you more interested in the Banished Knight Society. Though I tried to make this video as exhaustive as I could, there's probably more evidence and connections out there to find. I think if the upcoming DLC has any surprises or reveals, I hope it involves the Banished Knights or Exiles, because God knows they have more to talk about. This has been the Elden Conspiracy, signing out.